In this video, we're going to talk about limiting reactant, which can also be called limiting reagent. Along the way, we'll also discuss a related topic called excess reactant. Now, limiting reactant, excess reactant, this stuff all has to do with chemical reactions. But to explain it from the beginning, I actually don't want to start talking about the chemistry. Instead, I want to start talking about some analogies to cooking we'll compare a chemical reaction to a cooking recipe. Let's say you're having some friends over for a barbecue and you wanna make some cheeseburgers, all right? Here's what you're gonna to need to make them. You're gonna need a bun, you're gonna need a slice of cheese, and you're gonna need a piece of meat. Now, since we're comparing chemistry and cooking, we can write the recipe for this kinda of like a chemical equation, all right? Here it is, one bun, plus one slice of cheese, plus one piece of meat, put that all together, and it gives us one cheeseburger. The ingredients over here that we start with, we can think of those kind of like reactants in a chemical reaction, and the products over here, cheeseburger, is what we end up with. Okay, so now we've got our recipe. To do some cooking, we gotta get some more ingredients. Let's rummage around in the refrigerator, see what we can find. So here are our ingredients. And you'll notice we have different numbers of each one. This happens a lot in cooking, and it also happens a lot in chemical reactions. You often start with different amounts of each reactant. So we're talking about limiting reactant here. And limiting reactant comes into play when we ask the question, given these different numbers of ingredients, what is the greatest number of cheeseburgers that we can make? All right? We've got four buns here, we got nine slices of cheese, but if we've only got three pieces of meat, we can really only make three cheeseburgers, right? Check this out. Here's a first cheeseburger. Here's a second one. And here's the third one. And then we run out of meat and we can't make any more cheeseburgers. If this were a chemical reaction, we'd say that meat is the limiting reactant, okay? Here's a definition for you. Limiting reactant is the first reactant that's used up in a reaction. When the limiting reactant is all used up, no more product can form and the reaction stops. So clearly, meat was the first of these ingredients that was used up as we were making the cheeseburgers, and as soon as we use it all up, no more product can form. We can't make any more cheeseburgers and the whole process has to stop, right? We call it limiting reactant because it limits how much of the product we can make, right? It doesn't matter if we have a thousand buns or a hundred slices of cheese. Once we run out of those three pieces of meat, we're done. We can't make any more cheeseburgers. So the total number of cheeseburgers that we can make is completely dependent on the amount of the meat, the limiting reactant that we have. So after we run out of the meat, we still have some extra ingredients left up here. And these are what we call excess reactants. Excess reactant is what is left over after the reaction stops because the limiting reactant got all used up, okay? So we have some excess reactant. We got the bun here. We have one excess bun and then some more excess reactant. We have six pieces of cheese that are left over after the meat gets all used up, okay? So now that we've talked about the concepts behind limiting reactant and excess reactant, let's use this information to solve some problems that are a little bit more advanced. This looks more like a chemical equation, but we're still cooking here. I'm pretending that this is a recipe for bread rolls. It would actually be a terrible recipe. It's just flour and water. I definitely would want to eat these bread rolls, but this is going to be great practice for limiting reactant and excess reactant. So we're going to use this recipe or this equation to solve the following problem. What is the greatest amount of bread rolls that can be made with six cups of flour and three cups of water? If this were a chemical reaction, what would be the limiting reactant? Which reactant is in excess and how much is left over? So we want to make the greatest amount of bread rolls with six cups of flour and three cups of water. Let's get these ingredients out here. Here they are. Now to figure out the greatest amount of bread rolls we can make, we first have to identify which of these ingredients is a limiting reactant. 
Now, that's a little bit trickier than it was with the cheeseburger problem we just did. We can't only look at these and figure out which is a limiting reactant. Instead, we're going to have to solve this problem like this. We're going to start with, say, the flour. And we're going to ask, if we want to use the maximum amount of this flour, if we want to use all six cups, how much water are we going to need? Do we have enough or is it going to run out? And then we're going to switch and we're going to do the opposite. We're going to ask if we want to use the maximum amount of water, we want to use all three cups of this, how much flour do we need and do we have enough or is it going to run out? Okay, let me show you what I mean. Let's start with the flour. Okay, we got six cups here. Now this recipe is only for three cups. So what if you were in the kitchen and you actually wanted to make this recipe with six cups of flour instead of three? What would you do? Well, you'd double it. You'd multiply everything by two. Okay, so we can multiply this by two to make the recipe with six cups of flour. Now, if we're using six cups of flour, how much water do we need? Well, we can multiply this by two, which will tell us that we need two cups of water to go with the six cups of flour. And finally, how many bread rolls is that going to make? Well, we're just doubling the recipe. So instead of five, we're going to end up with 10. Okay, so that's for trying to use the maximum, the six cups of flour. What are we going to need in terms of flour if we want to use the maximum amount of water? Okay, we got three cups of water. Okay, the recipe is for one cup of water. So it's kind of like we got to triple the recipe. We're multiplying one by three. How about the flour? How much flour are we going to need for three cups of water? Well, we triple this. So we have three times three. We're going to need nine cups of flour. How many bread rolls are we going to get? Triple the recipe. Five times three, 15 bread rolls. All right, so here's all of our information. What's the greatest amount of bread rolls that we can make? Well, one of these situations isn't going to work because we're going to run out of one of the ingredients. Okay, let's take a look at this. If we start with six cups of flour, we need two cups of water. Do we have that? Yeah, we do. We have three cups. We actually have, have more than enough. So this would work. We could make 10 bread rolls. What if we start with a three cups of water? Then we need nine cups of flour. But that's not going to work because we only have six cups of flour. So we can't make 15 bread rolls because we don't have enough flour. The flour is going to be the first ingredient or the first reactant to run out. So that means that flour is the limiting reactant. It's going to limit the amount of bread rolls that we can make. So flour here is the limiting reactant. Now we can also show this visually, okay? Imagine that we're kind of cooking this recipe, okay? Three cups of flour and one cup of water get combined, okay? So here are three cups of flour, one cup of water. We take them, put them in the oven or whatever, and we get five bread rolls. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's do that again. Another three cups of flour, one cup of water, combine them, and we get five more bread rolls. One, two, three, four, five. And now you can see the flour has run out. The flour is the first thing to run out, so it's the limiting reactant. We still have one cup of water here, and that's excess. That's what we'd call our excess reactant one cup of water that's left over after we run out of the limiting reactant. Okay, so that's how you solve these kind of problems. You say, I want to use a maximum amount of flour. How much water do I need and do I run out? And then you say, I want to try using the maximum amount of water. How much flour do I need and do I run out of that? Now, here's a really important thing to mention. There's a common misconception that limiting reactant is the thing that you have the least of. But that's not true, right? Look at the example that we just did. We had more flour than water, but flour was the limiting reactant. And that's because limiting reactant isn't the thing you have the least amount of. It's the thing that runs out first. So even though we had more flour than water, when we're following this recipe, the flour gets used up before the water does. So that's why the flour is a limiting reactant even though we have more of it. So keep that in mind. Anyway, now that we've worked through this problem, let's finally look at an example that uses a real chemical equation. 
Here's a chemical equation, and we're going to use it to answer this question. What is the greatest amount of NH3 in moles that can be made with 3.2 moles of N2 and 5.4 moles of H2? Which is the limiting reactant? Which reactant is in excess, and how many moles of it are left over? Okay? So, these numbers might seem a little scary. And this might seem kind of confusing because it's a chemical equation, but the way we're gonna solve this problem is almost exactly the same as how we solved the last example with a flour and water. In order to find the greatest amount of NH3 that we can make, we've first gotta figure out which of these two things is the limiting reactant, okay? And we're gonna do it exactly the way we did the previous example. We're going to take the maximum amount of N2 here. We're going to see how much H2 would be needed to use all of it. And then we'll flip. We'll take the maximum amount of H2 and we'll see how much N2 we'd need to use all that. Then we'll ask, which do we run out of first? And that's the limiting reactant. Okay, so we'll start with the N2. I've got 3.2 moles of N2. Now in the previous example, we solved this stuff by sort of multiplying the recipe by a number, doubling it or tripling it. That's a good thing to know how to do, but I wanna show you another strategy here, okay? I wanna use some conversion factors. To do that, we look at the coefficients, these numbers before each one of the compounds. They tell us how many moles of each come together, okay? There's nothing in front of the N2, so I wanna add a one, all right? If there's nothing in front of it, it just means that it's a one, okay? So you can kind of see that here, the equation says we have one mole of N2. Here I have 3.2 moles of N2. So it's kind of like we're multiplying this by 3.2. To figure out how much H2 we need, I'm gonna use a conversion factor that shows the relationship between N2, or moles of N2, and moles of H2, okay? So I start off with 3.2 moles of N2, and then I'm gonna multiply this by a conversion factor that has three moles of H2 over one mole of N2. That's gonna tell us how much H2 we need, okay? So moles N2 cancels, moles N2 cancels, and we end up with 9.6 moles of H2. Okay, so this is how much H2 we need to use all of this N2. And again, this is kind of like we're multiplying by 3.2, or I should say it is like we're multiplying by 3.2, it's just another way to get this answer. Okay, so this is how much H2 we need for this much N2. Now let's do the opposite, okay? We have 5.4 moles of H2. I want to figure out how much N2 are we going to need to use all of that. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna start out with, here it is, 5.4 moles of H2. I wanna get rid of H2. So I'm gonna put H2 on the bottom here. Three moles of H2, one mole of N2. Moles H2 cancels out, and we do this math. 5.4 times one divided by three is gonna give us 1.8 moles of N2. Here it is. And you can see that we're going from 1 to 1.8. So even though we use conversion factors to solve this, it's kind of like we're multiplying both of these by 1.8. Okay, so now we have all the information that we need to figure out which one of these is a limiting reactant. Is it N2 or is it H2? Okay, well, if we start with 3.2 moles of N2, we need 9.6 moles of H2. But we don't have that much. We only have 5.4 moles of H2, okay? So the H2 is gonna be the first thing to run out. On the other hand, if we start with 5.4 moles of H2, we only need 1.8 moles of N2. We have plenty of that. So it just goes to show that we've got plenty of N2 and H2 is gonna be the first thing to run out. So that means that H2 is our limiting reactant. So now we wanna know what's the greatest amount of NH3 that we can make. Well, we have to start with this amount of H2 because that's our limiting reactant. 
So I'm going to multiply this by, oh, I need a multiplication sign. There it is. I'm going to multiply this by 2 moles NH3 over 3 moles of H2. Moles H2, moles H2 cancels out, and I get 3.6 moles of NH3. That's the maximum that I can make, okay? And there it is, 3.6 moles of NH3. It's kind of like we multiplied this by 1.8. So this number right there is the maximum that we can make without running out of any of the reactants. Now finally, let's talk excess reactant. If H2 is the limiting reactant, that means that there is going to be excess N2, that that is our excess reactant, okay? Let's figure out how much of it is left over, okay? Well, we start with 3.2, 3.2 moles of N2, and then we subtract how much we use. We only use 1.8 moles, okay? So minus 1.8 moles, and that's gonna give us 1.4 moles N2 for our excess. That's how much we have left over after the H2 runs out and we can't do this reaction anymore, okay? So that is how you solve limiting reactant problems. First, you figure out which of your reactants is the limiting reactant, and then using the maximum amount of the limiting reactant, you figure out how much of the product you can make. For the excess reactant, you're gonna calculate how much you have left over after the reaction stops because you've used up all of the limiting reactant. Now, limiting reactant can be one of the most difficult concepts in chemistry, so I really urge you to watch some other videos, do a lot of practice problems, so this becomes very, very comfortable.